If you turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And I'm going to... Uh, Pastor Ned last Sunday preached on predestination. And uh, he, he carried the shingles up and I'm going to nail them down today. You know, they often say... Uh, what do we believe as Baptists? We have some Baptist distinctives. Because we're Baptists, we believe in eternal security. There's some things we believe in. We believe you should be baptized after you're saved and not necessarily before. So uh, another uh, Baptist uh, doctrine has to do with the, ter ter the, uh, the subject of uh, predestination. And uh, Pastor Ned did a, just a wonderful uh, presentation on it last Sunday. And so uh, I'm going to uh, reinforce what he said. Um, but first we'll read Luke chapter 10, and I'm going to read verses 17 through 20, and then I'll have a word of prayer. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding. In this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would uh, help us now and that our ears would be attentive that our hearts will be ready to receive what you have to say to us as individuals through the Holy Spirit. And then, Father, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to bring this message. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read uh, the first verse of a hymn entitled, Is My Name Written There? And the first verse goes like this. Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver nor gold. I would make sure of heaven. I would enter the fold in the book of thy kingdom with this pages so fair. Tell me, Jesus, my Savior, is my name written there? Is my name written there on the page white and fair? In the book of thy kingdom, is my name written there? It is marvelous that the disciples that we just read about in Luke chapter 10 had power over devils, but better yet, because their names are written down. Their names are written there. They are headed for a place where there'll be no devils at all. And that's more to rejoice about, isn't it? Yes. Rejoice not so much that the devils are subject unto you down here because the place is full of them everywhere you turn. But rejoice that someday you'll be in a place where you won't find one devil at all. Then Jesus said that he saw Satan cast down from heaven. The very one who gave the disciples the power to cast out devils had the power to cast Satan out of heaven itself. And he's not done with Satan yet, is he? Jesus will cast him down two more times. Think about it. Um, during the uh, millennium, Jesus calls for an angel to, uh, that has the keys to the bottom of this pit. And that angel will take Satan and cast him down into that bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then he'll be loose for a season, won't he? And then when he thinks he's done, Jesus will cast him again into the lake of fire, which burneth forever and ever. And this is the second death. So he's got two more castings to come. That's how powerful our Savior is. Far more powerful than any devil, any demon, or Satan himself. The question presented in the first verse is, 
how can I, this is a question that we have when we consider the subject of predestination, that God knew from the foundations of the world that our names would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so it comes the hymn, is my name written there? Is it vain for me to come to church if my name's not written there? Why even try? So we need to address the subject as Pastor did so well last Sunday, and I'll continue here with this. The question presents itself is, how can I rejoice that my name's written down if I'm not sure that my name's written down? A simple childlike question. Because we need to believe as a little child. And can a little child ponder the deep things of predestination? Did the thief on the cross have to ponder much of anything other than to say, Lord, would you just remember me? And he said, yes. Today you'll be with me in paradise. He came to Jesus. It's as simple as the faith of a little child. So the question that we have when we consider the term predestination, and none of the disciples said, well, how can we know that our name's written down? They just rejoiced. And that question is, how can I rejoice that my name's written down if I'm not sure that my name's written down? I have simply one portion of scripture to read to you, and it's found in 1 John chapter 5. How can I know my name's written down? 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 says, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. That I can understand. Do I have the Son? Yes, I remember the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I have the Son. I know my name is written down. By simple faith. I trusted in him to be my personal savior. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. That to me sums up the subject of predestination. But we think a little bit deeper, don't we? Because we're grown-ups. And we have questions. And so I will attempt to answer those questions too. If you stay awake, awake long enough. A subject of predestination. The next question to follow is this. How did God know from the foundation of the world that my name was written down? How did he know? Can I say, before I quote some scriptures, that he knows the beginning from the end. Debbie came up and wrote a prophecy on our country that we didn't do nothing about, but that's going to happen. You read the book of Revelations and a lot of things are going to happen. God already knows. It's as if they already happened to God. So I say to you in simplicity, and I'll, uh, I'll go a little deeper with it, and the simplicity is, that night I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. God said, I knew it. I knew the beginning from the end. I knew Russ when he was a little baby, and I knew that he was going to get saved because I know the beginning from the end. It's that like uh, yesterday, the Chelsea Bulldogs lost to River Rouge. Sad day, sad day. But now it's already happened. Now I know the beginning from the end. On just one day. I'm good to remember just about part of one day. God knows the beginning from the end, from the beginning of the world to the end of the world. And when you, the day you get saved, he already says, I knew it. I knew it. So we read some verses to, to support that scripture. And it's John 3.16, we have it memorized. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever. 
if the subject of predestination was that God decided, okay, you're going to get saved, you're not, you are, you're not, then why, what is the use of even going to church? I'm, I'm, if I'm going to get saved, I'm going to get saved. Why, why do I need to kneel down and ask Jesus to save my soul if he's already decided that I would? That's not how it works. That's why he says, for whosoever. Whosoever. Because there are some that won't. Now, God knew from the beginning that they wouldn't. You and I don't know that. We can work on relatives for years and years, and then one day, all of a sudden, they just tenderly accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And we go like this, whew, and God says, I knew it. I knew it. Whosoever. Matthew 11. I just, I just love these portions of Scripture. Matthew 11, um, verses uh, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest where? Rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is easy to understand predestination if you simply understand that he knew all along. You don't. Your concern is, I need to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. And then one more portion of Scripture I'll read on that concerning the subject of how God sees our salvation. And that is found in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that one soul go to hell. But there are those that will reject him. What's the unpardonable sin? It's rejecting God's wooing and working on us and drawing us to him to the point where we come to Christ as our, and ask him to be our personal savior. To understand that God knows the beginning from the end, the very moment you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, God simply says, I knew it all along. He already knew. He foreknew. And so, the last verse of Is My Name Written There goes like this. Lord, my sins, they are many, like the sands of the sea, but thy blood, O my Savior, is sufficient for me. For thy promise is written in bright letters that glow, you, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them like snow. Yes, my name's written there, on the page white and fair, in the book of thy kingdom. Yes, my name's written there. Amen. It's as simple to understand. We, we, you can go real deep on this. You can read whole books on it. You can you can hear a sermon after sermon on the subject. But if you just simply, like a little child, accept your salvation, that is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. If I ask Jesus into my heart, if, I, if a little five-year-old child asks Jesus into their, heart, into their heart, I don't have to say, now listen, let me talk to you about predestination, because the fact of the matter is, uh, if you've accepted Christ, there's a chance you, that he may not let you go to heaven anyway. What kind of a salvation is that? Yes, my name's written there. So I'm going to read long, one last portion of Scripture and we'll be done because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, 
verses 22 through 24. Hebrews chapter 12. And now we dwell on the subject of, yes, my name is written there. I believe God's holy word. I've trusted in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And the very moment I did, Jesus said, I already knew you would. But we didn't. Until we asked him. And so now we read in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 24. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, listen, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So here we are, and like the disciples in Luke chapter 10, We've had to deal with devils all our lives. But hallelujah, my name's written down. And someday I will dwell in a place full of angels instead of a place full of demons. Because my name's written down, I can rejoice that someday I will dwell in the city of the living God. Oh, how beautiful heaven must be. Uh, Ned and Bonnie saying, I'll fly away. And we thought about heaven, didn't we? Yes. Fly away from all of this? Yeah. We, we can now fly united, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Without masks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful day that will be. And a, and a Christian can pillow their head at night saying, yes, I know my name's written down. And not deal and struggle with uh, deep, deep subjects that theologians love to dig into because they think they are so smart. The simplicity of the gospel is accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There, I recorded that for Rosemary because I don't think she paid attention to it.